Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a front yard 100 gallon pond build. But before we get started, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So what is good guys? It is your host with the most Paul Plant 2. And again, I am in the front yard. So recently I created this giant circular bed to expand my planting and landscaping area. And I have a small pond in the backyard that I did build. Shout out to anyone who did watch that video. And today I want to expand the size of my pond and put one in the front yard. So behind me, I have a prefab pond that I got for clearance, half off on sale at Lowe's. Originally 284, now 140. 206 on clearance, 100 gallons. Some of these they sell for 355 allegedly. I don't know why. It's prefab, so I can have it above ground slightly, which is what I need. So, boom, I plopped the pond down in this area, and now it's time to outline it and dig a hole so I can halfway submerge it. So, I have somewhat outlined where the pond is going to be, and I hit some giant tree roots so look how big these roots are if i cut them i could potentially kill the tree so this entire pond is going to be here simply just has to be above ground and that's another reason why i got the prefabricated model now there is a slight slope coming from the pine tree to the edge of the garden bed so i got bags of topsoil to try and level out the area that i was going to place the pond on and i did whip out the trusty level to try and make sure everything was as even keeled as humanly possible whilst i built this above ground pond so I've pushed up a bunch of topsoil on the edges of the pond, and obviously I'm gonna have to really build up a mountain, but I don't wanna just buy a ton of topsoil, so I'm gonna build a lot of that mountain with these logs as the foundation. Now, anytime I see people throw out huge branches, I usually do grab them up, so these will be a nice filler, and they will biodegrade and break down and definitely take up a lot of the room as of right now. Dude, it's the next day, and I found the ultimate pile of wood to surround my pond with. Now, this wood is also architectural, so I can use it in the garden. It's free 99, so I'm gonna mount up and grab it. Dude, this piece is so clean looking. So when I got home, I began unloading the wood and laying down the largest pieces as the structural base support system for the upper deck, upper layer of the pond. And of course, with the more wood I used, the less of a need for fill dirt would be required. And overall, the structure was looking nice and decently integral at this point. So I have the base layer of logs laid all the way down. And now behind me, I have a ton of soil that I dug up out of my yard. So this should be enough to surround the pond with. And eventually, yes, the logs will break down, but the soil will kind of fill in its place. The rocks that I put on top will dip down naturally. And then after a few years, I'll probably just add more topsoil if need be. So when I was adding the topsoil, I made sure to push it in all the cracks, all the crevasses to ensure that there were no gaps and to have the fill be as complete as possible. So I think I have the first tier of soil pretty good in the ground and now i'm going to use the rest of these giant logs to create kind of decorative retaining walls on the outside and i also am using the logs to create a less steep grade coming from the edge of the pond all the way down and this wood was really nice really strong freshly cut and weathered i also incorporated a stump and yes all this wood i picked up on the side of the road as well yeah this is some solid wood dude i also found a really cool piece that was structural and would be a nice bird perch and it looked really cool being a vertical element and then i also laid down some other pieces on the outside and made sure each piece of wood interlocked with one another so that way the pond would not erode crumble and potentially collapse on the back end i added more stumps and really this is just utilizing as much free materials as i had on hand i begin filling in all the gaps again with tons of that topsoil to make sure that the level eventually built up and was even with the edge of the pond and as you guys can see the soil is starting to look nice and even but i needed a more gradual grade so i used even more found lumber and wood to build up a massive caldera for this volcano of a pond system i am working with so yeah overall i think i was really making some progress and loved the way the pond was looking as it was being constructed okay guys so we have all the dirt aligned with the outskirts of the pond finally i just did a walk on to stomp everything down to make sure it was solid it is now it's time to line the pond with rocks 
fill in the top tier with plants. But before I do so, I gotta lay down a little bit of cardboard around the edges just to smother out any potential weed seeds that were in that topsoil. Now it's time for the rocks. When adding rocks, it is important to conceal the pond's edge just to make things look as natural as possible. So I made sure the edges of the rocks did match the curve of the pond and that they did interlock. So that way the rocks would not go anywhere. And my Lord, it looked so clean and so perfect. Perfect. I feel good guys. We have all the rocks loosely put in. Now I'm gonna do a double layer and then intermingle rocks throughout the rest of the design, but I wanna plug in a couple of plants on the backside of the pond to really start to build out these tiers. Now when it comes to plants, I love native species. They'll survive really well. They can survive the crazy fluctuations in temperature and they will attract native wildlife such as birds and other animals that will eat upon the fruits, butterflies, bees, and overall just bring nature into the garden. So the first plant I am throwing in is gonna give a nice tropical vibe. It is the Sable Miner palmetto so this guy will get about six feet tall and will look absolutely lush now in this little corridor and pocket right here I'm throwing in a sunshine ligustrum to add a nice lime green flair to the pond so what I did last night was I laid down a ton of plants in the positions they're going to go and I want to go ahead and get a lot of them in their designated areas and then backfill the rest with soil and then finally add the rocks. So this is what really is gonna bring the pond to life is adding all of these plants. So on this side of the pond, I'm gonna throw in this variegated ginger, shell ginger, to add a nice lemon Sprite flavor to this area. Now to add a guaranteed pop of color, I threw in this drift rose. It stays smaller, can creep and crawl around the rocks, and I actually locked it in with some rocks that I placed around it. I also threw in a native inland sea oats just to attract wildlife and locked that in with another flagstone. So by this rose bush, I have a tall vertical wall. I'm gonna use uh, this like piece of fallen tree branch to conceal it. And then in this gap right here, I'm throwing in some Mystic Spire Salvia. These attract bees like nobody's business. Now next up, I'm gonna throw in this Agapanthus and it's gonna sit right here, kind of even with the pond's edge. Next, I threw in a blanket flower and I try to keep the smaller plants towards the top edge of the pond and I plugged in the larger plants towards the middle and the bottom layers of the pond. All right, guys, I just stopped by Lowe's. I got some final plants I'm gonna throw in for today. Which is the Wondering Dude and it adds a clean pop of purple to the front of the pond. And I cut off a couple pieces and I stuck them in the side of the pond to propagate the plant and help it spread. Now I wanna break up the bed with the pond so I need to start crushing it to the ground level as well and plugging in a couple of plants down here. All right guys, so it is yet another day and today I'm gonna work on the waterfall feature so I can see how many stones I have left to surround the X skirts of the pond. So I'm gonna fill it up with water, get the pump set up, get the hose set up and then get the waterfall going. So I filled the pond with 100 gallons of water and it looks super serene very clean and truly lended to the majestic look I was going for. Then on the back side of the pond, I began stacking some flat rocks to create a nice base for the waterfall spillway to fit onto. And I had to make sure it lined up perfectly so no water would dribble out of the pond. Then I added a nice filter pad to help clean up the water and of course a pump. I got it for I think 20 bucks on Amazon, link in description. So I submerged it in the pond, then I wound the hose around the back side, plugged it in, and my guys, we had the water flowing and going into the pond with no spillage, no leakage, and I had my oxygenation and filtration set up for the pond. Now, before I go too crazy on the back end, I gotta put a few more plants in. And I have this Thai plant, nice little pop of red that's ready to go. Then I added a columbine, which is a native flower species, and I began disguising the hose with more rocks around the edges. I stacked the rock atop the spillway so nothing would fall in it, and then added some rocks on the back end, and then flowed more rocks around the edge of the pond just to make sure that any mechanical elements were concealed and to add a more robust, natural look to the entire area. And my lord, the waterfall was complete. Then I begin moving more elements to the backside of the pond. All right, 
I have to throw in a canna lily because the pop of purple and the size of this plant will really add some nice contrast. Then I threw in an elephant ear to really add a huge tropical vibe. And for the fabled red foliage, I threw in a Thai plant as well. So now we have this side of the pond that is left and I wanna build a staircase on it so I can have access. So that's what we shall do right now. So each rock I placed in the staircase, I had to make sure it was stable. And of course you need multiple access points to feed fish, maintain the pond and have access to the pump as well. Okay guys, so I do believe this is gonna be the last day on the pond build, or at least that's what I say right now. But basically I just have to do the remaining sides and put in a ton of plants. Now I've been putting in a lot of structural plants and trying to include as many natives as possible, but I have a ton of native plants right here right now that are going to absolutely fill in the rest of the landscape so i started with an evergreen yopon holly that will maintain foliage even during the coldest of times i also found this big ass rock on the side of the road that i'm going to incorporate right here then i planted some small guaras that have amazing flowers now in this gap i'm going to throw in some agastache and I'm placing all the taller plants on the back side of the pond and these get up to four feet tall, but they look great. All right, this looks like prime real estate for this Itea virginica. So that is where this is going. This has beautiful flowers on it. And of course it's native. All right, now is another little bush that'll cover up this area. Greg's mist flower, beautiful blue, flawless, flawless. Now for that bright lime green hit, I added a Carex Everillo. It kind of looks like little hairs are growing. I locked that dude in with a rock. And then I also added an ice plant to crawl around. Added a native Coryopsis, which I surrounded with a few rocks. That's a nice boulder. And then I added a stick as an accent and some more accent plants. Now on this back end, I want to spice it up a little bit and I have easy access back here. So I want to make this a little pepper garden. But before the peppers, I want to throw in some spineless cactus. I like munching on those as well. So shout out my uncle for the nopales. These are just pads out of his garden and they absolutely took off. Now behind the cactus, I'm throwing in the jalapeno. Then to add my second access point, I threw in a flagstone and made sure it was walkable. Okay guys, so we are close to the finishing touches on the outside of the pond. And what I'm about to do right now is mix compost in topsoil and then plug in a ton of the gaps. That way the compost will enrich the soil and any uneven areas will be evened out with some of that in certain places. And then I'm gonna chunk in a couple of plants and some wildflower seeds along the way. Now areas that might erode easily, I like blocking off with some rocks. So these smooth river rocks don't only add a new textural and size element, but again, they'll keep the soil locked in place, fill in all the gaps, and make sure everything stays largely where it's supposed to. Now, if you're an astute observer, you probably see these pine cones as well. These also will just grip up the soil and prevent any runoff from occurring. And now to finish it off, I have to put on some hardwood mulch just to really keep everything down. I got pine bark mulch and shredded hardwood just to make sure that the soil does stay in place as much as possible, just to limit erosion. And then I'm gonna decorate the rest with some shells that I found at the thrift store and more river rocks just to kind of cap everything off. Now I had to address the base layer of the garden bed and add a ton of plants to really keep the eye moving and make the scape visually appealing. So that's what I did. Now everything I'm adding to the front and along the edges are all native flower species. I got these for half off at Lowe's, these Tixie Coryopsises, and I'm putting them all close together so it does look like a natural wildlife meadow. And then I have this sensitive plant where if you touch it, the leaves will curl up on themselves, which is very cool. This will be a ground cover with nice little puffs of flowers. In front of the pine tree, I chunked in this knockout rose that'll grow tall, and it also matches the small drift rose that I added earlier. All right, y'all, so I think today is gonna be the last day of the pond build, which is a shame because it is nasty outside, not sunny whatsoever. But the first thing I need to do is rinse off all of the mulch that has fallen on the rocks to make it clean, but I'm not gonna use any water from the hose. I actually have to drain the pond in order to put in its subsurface and in order to put in some plants. 
Okay guys, so the pond is empty and now it's time to add the substrate. So I dug up a lot of dirt from the backyard, which is what I've been mounding this entire area with. It does have a lot of sand, it does have some leaves in it, but I want a thick substrate where bacteria can live. And that way there is a nice place for all the roots of the aquatic plants to grow. So I'm gonna put in some topsoil. Then I added three bags of sand that equated to about two and a half inches. I leveled out the whole thing and then it was time to add some plants. Now as for the plants I'm gonna throw in before I add the gravel, I'm gonna chunk in this pickerel weed, which is a native plant to most of North America. And this guy can die back during a freeze and then reemerge in the springtime. So it is perfect. It attracts pollinators, it's edible, and koi and goldfish will not eat it. So this is an absolute stunner of a plant. It also has kind of a tropical look to it, which I love. So let me grab a ton of this out of my stock tank and add it to the pond. Now as for this horsetail, I need to remove a lot of the soil. It has fertilizers in it. I just need that out of there and I'll just sink the roots into my substrate. Now, while the water is running, I'm also gonna rinse out the pea gravel just to get a lot of that dirt, dust, and debris off of there. Okay guys, so all the gravel is laid down. I am standing in the pond still and a couple of things I need to do is I need to put a flat rock where the waterfall drops in. So that way it does not erode the bottom level and area and so it doesn't kick up dirt. Bang. Now I also am gonna place this half broken pot right here that way there is a hide for the fish just in case predators hop in the pound and then i'm going to chunk in some of these river rocks in some random places too just for a little textural variety you dig now another thing i want to do while i'm in the pond is plant some of these lily pad seeds i got these on amazon i'm probably going to plant like eight to ten of them I'm not sure all of them will take, but I just want to submerge them in the pebbles and hopefully I have a ton of lily pads that pop up that also provide some cover for the fish. Now is the moment of truth. I'm going to fill up the pond with water, get everything cycling and running, and then we will return another day to add the fish. But let's get this thing filled. So when the water was fully topped off, it looked like a nice Starbucks brown color, but best believe it cleared up in no time, daddy. And all right, guys. So it has approximately been one month since I last did an update and the pond is beyond flourishing. Now I've done a couple of things since that time and that was to bury the wire that actually does power the pond with the PVC pipe so that way no one is tripping over it and it is concealed. I also have seen the plants grow exponentially. Like I'm talking about the canna lilies are popping off. A ton of the tiny species of native flowers are huge and flowering. The pickerel weed also is in flower. The plants in the front of the pond are super tall and the lily pads have taken off. Furthermore, the pond has went from this weird Starbucks colored coffee color to a green to now crystal clear. And today I am adding in some fish. Now with that being said, unfortunately, I did put in some white cloud minnows and those got eaten, okay? Or at least they disappeared. They went somewhere, but they are no longer here. And that's because the pond pump kept getting clogged. So I put a mesh bag around it and have solved that problem, which is very clutch. And today I got two more species of fish. I got some rosy red minnows, which are typically just a feeder fish. And I got one comet goldfish that is black on top. So hopefully it blends in a little bit better. But those fish were all together $4.72. I got 21 fish in total. So it's time to put them in. I'm gonna give them a couple of weeks and hopefully they don't get snatched up. If they do, we're gonna have a whole nother problem and conundrum on our hands. All right, here we go. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the fish are in the pond swimming around. Of course, I got cheaper fish, so some of them most likely will not survive, but only time will tell how they fare in the pond. Speaking of time, it took me about two weeks of work to do this, probably like 15 days of on and off working to get this project done. A couple hours here and there, nothing overly wildly consistent, 
But yeah, I'm very excited to see how this continues to flourish. Again, the space was nothing but an empty flower bed and now is a lush garden oasis. And I have to say, ever since I put in all these plants and the water feature, more birds, more wildlife, more insects, more lizards, more bees have been in the garden, which is why I do this. So if you guys found any enjoyment whatsoever or potentially inspiration, please smash the like button. Your support goes a long way. And subscribe if you guys are not already because I'm gonna do a lot more aquatic related content. And of course, my love are these plants. If you have any questions, suggestions, drop it in the comment section down below because I also wanna figure out some other type of fish that I can put in here that might be better at evading predators and might be super, super hardy. So yes, every comment definitely is appreciated. Every like goes a long way. And always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. I will see you guys soon. Man, we're gonna end off with some less shots of the garden. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. So there it is, man. A front yard pond complete. Catch y'all next time. Killing these songs, leaving a bloody life. I roost them. And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to.